Well, Raymond, it's official. They love you no matter what you do. With a wagon load of Emmys and nine seasons of smile-worthy ratings, Everybody Loves Raymond broadcast its final episode on CBS in May of 2005. I'm sorry, but I am not the yeller. You are the reason for the yeller! Then came syndication, and the show was everywhere. That's going to need another coat. It was like Seinfeldian proportions. If you were surfing on the dial, there was one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. Yeah, you, you, you said that like with a little bit of dread. There's another one, <laughs> there's another one. <laughs> Raymond is one of those shows audiences like to watch over and over again. It's a sitcom classic, no question. I don't know what to do. Sometimes I just want to smack you. <laughs> When you looked over the script, what was it like to go back and sort of walk through that part again? You, you know, it's funny, Harry. It, it immediately reminded me, because, you know, a lot of those scripts we haven't seen in maybe, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah. It reminded me how amazing the writing was, you know? And that's what really has always stood out. You know, we were very lucky to get a cast like this. We had a chemistry early on that, you know, you can't predict and you, and you can't plan. But it was really the how all the writing just stood up. I laughed out loud. By the way, as I do when I see reruns of Raymond, and you know, I've basically spent the pandemic sitting in front of the TV watching reruns of Raymond. <laughs> um, but and I laugh every time. Yeah. Oh! That's a turkey. You kind of get to see the show like a viewer. I appreciated it so much more now, looking back at the scripts now, because I, I had forgotten, I for, uh, you know, what it was like, and I, I'm reading it on the page, and I'm like, man, this was good. Easier now, no doubt. The show was roughly based on Ray Romano's own family, and Romano was also one of the executive producers. Well, you know, when you're in there, you're, you're part of the writing and the producing and this, and you're worried about how it's being executed. It's hard to just watch it from a neutral standpoint, you know? It was great to experience it now. Yeah, that's cool. I, I recommend it to any of, anybody who's had a show that's been off the air for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Among the most important aspects of successful sitcom alchemy is casting. One of the lucky things that has to happen is the casting has to be special. Uh, you know, we, we read 200 women until Patty came in the room uh, uh, to read for the wife. Explain to me how you can't fold a shirt. Explain to me how an adult human with thumbs is not able to do that. They knew immediately, and it was often Heaton who got the best lines. One of the best lines I had in all nine seasons was when I said to Ray, if my parents lit an orphanage on fire on Christmas Day, they still wouldn't be as bad as your parents. Yeah. <laughs> she was the anchor, in my opinion. She was surrounded by this circus. <laughs> and what I loved with Patty, who's, I don't know to tell you, incredibly talented. But what was great, it was so easy to fall into that woe is me victimhood. And she played this strong woman who wouldn't take anyone's crap. All right, Marie. But lost since that last episode, both Peter Boyle and the redoubtable Doris Roberts. I am going to give you the secret to marital bliss. After you give it to him, why don't you let me in on it? When you say we did a table read, we didn't do one script. We did select scenes throughout the whole mm. eight, nine seasons. And there were a lot of times where the scene, like the mother comes in, and we had, we had to stop the scene there, but the funniest stuff was coming up with Doris coming in or Peter coming in. So yeah, you just appreciate and miss them even more. And as for that ever-present suggestion, common among hit comedies, about a reunion or a reboot. We've kind of agreed that that probably will never, that, I mean, let's not probably, it won't happen with us. We're missing Peter, we're missing Doris, we're missing the crux of the show. This is kind of as close as it'll get to us performing again the show. We may do something together as a group, at, at, as a panel, as a talk show or something, but to actually perform as our characters, I think this is the only chance you'll get to see it, you know? Sounds like a blast. And if you want to watch, you can go on the, uh, the Myeloma website. Uh, on their, they have a YouTube channel. They've got it on Facebook. It's free. It's Friday night. 
and just them getting together and hearing them talk about it, just their enthusiasm for it was just fantastic and quite infectious. I could have watched yeah. another 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Everybody's got a favorite. Well, it's so much like Lucy, right? And Dick mm-hmm. Van Dyke. It's a, it really has so, it hits so many of those perfect notes, That's perfect right. pitch. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not going to reboot you it. You mentioned a favorite. Do you have a favorite? Episode? Oh, my gosh. The episode where uh, they leave, they come back from vacation yeah. and they leave the suitcase oh, the on the landing. Episode. And they put, che- <laughs> they will not, no, but it's a, it's a battle of wills. Awesome. The one where she throws out the Muhammad Ali autograph. Oh, yeah. Remember that one? Or he records over their wedding oh, for a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, Super Bowl. <laughs> Harry, thank you. Thanks, thank Harry. You we got two viewers right there. Oh, man. You bet.